Well, five matriculants are back after a five-day expedition to Antarctica. The group has been gathering data around glaciers. Well, I'm joined now by one of the students and matrix in Antarctica founder, Thea Juanita Ernest. I'm also joined by adventurer and explorer, Rian Mansur. But Thea and Rian, thank you so much for your time. Welcome home as well. Thea, you got back about a week ago, and we spoke to you before you actually left on this trip. So was it everything you expected it to be? Good morning, Yuveka, and to all of your viewers. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. The trip to Antarctica was absolutely enriching and just everything I imagined it to be and much more. I experienced so many valuable experiences, such as hiking and camping for the first time um, in a place like Antarctica. And I was just so in awe of God's grace and mercy, even going and coming back and it was just absolutely incredible mm. all right Rian, i want to hear from you what what is it that you actually uh, wanted these five youngsters to actually do in antarctica uh, in, in antarctica i understand they had to go through a bit of a process there was a little bit of a competition they had to answer some questions for you just just talk us through that what what the process was and what you needed them to do when you got there Uveka, it was actually um, quite a rigorous process. I think the um, students had to jump through a lot of hoops. I mean, just the, the bucket list um, trip to Antarctica, you know, people were really queuing to be, to be one of those top five students. The, the idea, I think, um, probably stems, I think, from the, the, the whole environment theme that we've got around Matrix and Antarctica, stems just from my, let's call it lack of patience, I guess, with um, how people... Um, perceive this global problem of, of saving the planet. You know, we talk about it so much. We have meetings about it. We, we just spew a lot of hot air. And I mm. was hoping that through this process that we would get five students that would actually act, five students that would understand there's an ocean between saying and doing. Five students would then stand up and say, this is not good enough. Now, for, for me, I just thought that there needs to be a catalyst that excites these students. What better place to take mm. them and to excite them than Antarctica? Well, Athea, so, so tell us more about what it is you actually had to do, because you told us, and we could pick up how passionate you were about the environment, about cl cl the climate, about the planet as well. So when you got there, sort of, you know, was it, was it something that just definitely spurred you on even further and said, this is exactly why I want to do what I want to do? Absolutely. I think that going to Antarctica was given the opportunity to perform countless science experiments with the team. And it was just such an incredible experience getting to interact and engage with them on that science level. And I think just getting exposed to all of that. We did some water quality testing, some um, BP testing. So it was absolutely incredible. And I think just um, engaging with the likes of Rian and Mareka and Mr. Wahid and just picking their brain and allowing us to have that kind of discourse around the dinner table and just uh, while we were on our expedition as well just gave me some valuable insight about the kind of action that I need to implement in my community and coming back to Verlum and, and you know recognizing that there's a need and that this is an urgent issue that we need to engage with but as Rian said not just engage with but just you know understand even deeper and and, you know, prompt action. So it was absolutely incredible. Well, I would imagine that it was absolutely incredibly cold as well there, Thea. I mean, what were the facilities like? What were the challenges you had to face for those five days? Wow, it was uh, it was cold, but not as cold as I had imagined. Mm. And I think that um, although it was comfortable, you know, being in a climate that my body adjusted to very well, it was also just an indication of um, just how far this problem has um, gone in terms of an Antarctic summer not being that cold. So that was a bit saddening. But um, all in all, the facilities were absolutely, you know, um, comfortable. We were in well-heated rooms when we were at the guest house, and the facilities were. Just just, you know, so so easy to use, and it was a different kind of um, you know facility, but it was absolutely uh, lovely. And I think I have to commend um, Elsie and Rian's team for um, allowing the Matrix to have the most safe and comfortable stay at Oasis, and even in Antarctica, it was just mind blowing. I can't put into words just how special that experience was. Well, I must say, I would never imagine that there would be a guest house on Antarctica. It just looks, seems like it's a lot of snow, uh, Rian. So you obviously. 
obviously kept them in the best possible, uh, most comfortable conditions as well. So would you say this was mission accomplished? Would you say that there was just, in that five days, you managed to pack in uh, a whole lot of learning for these five youngsters, Rian? Yeah, listen, I'm, I, if you speak to anybody that knows me well, any of my staff, they'll tell you I'm never satisfied. But this definitely was a home run. I, I, I said to the students when we um, had returned back to Cape Town, I said to them, I couldn't have picked five more incredible students. I couldn't have um, found five real special, special students. So um, from that aspect, definitely a home run. But Rebecca, you know, when you're 18 years old, you know, this whole um, big bad world out there is, is an intimidating one. Um, I really hope that each of these students understand the springboard that a project like this has afforded them. Something that, that could take them um, you know, a year that could have taken them 10 years in mm, their career. Mm. So um, if this is going to be a home run. It's on Thea's shoulders, it's on Kubis' shoulders, it's on Ayaka's shoulders. They have to go and take this and make something of it. Um, you know, when we were give, given a gift of mentorship when we were younger, we at the time didn't realize the value and the, the actual um, opportunity that you were given. And I think um, these five students definitely see the opportunity. Fantastic. Well, Thea, as you heard uh, Rian say there, the ball is in your court now. So what are you going to do with all of this? Well, uh, I have a lot of things planned in my community at the moment. I've been in discussions with a lot of my community leaders to implement some action oriented um, projects just centered around sustainable development and uh, critical thinking. I think that um, all of the action that we need to see happen in our community stems from the simultaneous thinking and mindset that we need to adopt. So just, um, you know, trying to balance the two. As Rian said, I am 18, and so it's going to be difficult to try and um, you know penetrate these barriers and break down these stereotypes but it, it's uh, something that I have to do and it's a challenge that I'm more than willing to accept and it was just going to Antarctica and coming back that renewed perspective that I have is something that will stay with me forever. Now, I know it was just it, it was a five-day trip but do you, has it changed you forever Thea? Has it changed your outlook and, and given you more of that purpose? Most definitely. I think that I don't think that the team understands just how much this opportunity has done for them. But while I was compiling, you know, reports and just reflecting um, throughout the journey, looking at pictures and just thinking about the trip as a whole, it's just been so self enriching and it truly has changed me because the program was so multifaceted in its approach. Mm. It didn't just develop me as um, somebody who wants to tackle climate change, mm. but it's developed me just holistically as a person. And I've told um, the organizers this, that they've done such a great job at just developing us as people, as mm. people who want to see change happen. And a program that's so well-rounded in its approach will never, ever fail. It was absolutely successful. So, yes, it changed me as a person for Fantastic. the better. Fantastic. Well, Rian, I'm sure there are other people out there going, or other kids going, what about me? So is this the first of many? Was this a once-off? What next for you? No, so <clears throat> listen, definitely, we, this, this wasn't a once-off. We have a five-year plan. Our partners, Elsie, the the people that take people to Antarctica, the, the guys that actually do the administration, the owners of that lovely guest house you were speaking of, which Theo will tell you in Antarctica terms is, is very luxurious. <laughs> but come on, when I just sit now and I just listen, Rebecca, to, to Thea speaking, you know, I'm proud. And I, and I mean, I've just spent, you know, two weeks with them and, and, and that trip to Antarctica. Isn't she just an incredible um, uh, advocate? Mm. Somebody that you would actually sit around a table and listen to. If she was bringing an argument to the table, you would. So, um, man, it, it's almost like when I said, no, no, it's a home run. It's, it's better than that. We obviously will, will um, start up the, the 2021 campaign. We will do that middle of the year where we'll be approaching schools and I'm just getting the story out. And then in September, the applications will start again. Yeah. So um, definitely not one off. We... We just can't wait to get 2021 going. Fantastic. Well, Rian, yes, I can believe it because she comes from good stock. She is from my former high school, did I mention that, and from my hometown as well. So well done to both of you. Thanks so much uh, for taking the time to chat to us and just look back on that amazing trip.